It feels so good to be alive. Got all my family by my side. It has been a week of celebrations of the Kansas Jayhawks and their fans. We're riding off into the sunset. Jayhawks are on top. College basketball, right where we belong, baby. Rock top. From New Orleans Monday night to Lawrence and the Power and Light District early Tuesday morning. The party has just kept going. Now the team that'll go down in NCAA history for the biggest comeback ever is getting a hero's parade in Lawrence. And we welcome you to special coverage this afternoon of the National Championship Celebration Parade for the Kansas Jayhawks basketball team. Rock Chuck, good afternoon. I'm Haley Harrison along with Jackson Kurtz here along Mass Street where the parade has just begun. And you know what? This is a pretty great assignment for us, Jackson. We're a couple of Kansas alums. How did we get this assignment today? You couldn't ask for a better Sunday coverage <laughs> of the Jayhawks championship parade. This is pretty great. We just saw fire truck go by, the spirit squad, some of the band. You see uh, emergency responders. And look, in, in Lawrence, Kansas, every vehicle, every fan, everybody is decked out in their crimson and blue on it's a week like this. It's funny, it's almost as if when the fans were in the middle of Mass Street, now they're on the outside watching. Just so many people. I mean, if you walked down Mass earlier, you know, I don't know if I've ever seen that many people just on Mass Street just <laughs> celebrating uh, the Jayhawks in this win. So, and so incredible. And now, you were down here, you're talking about Monday night when you were down here in the street with the fans, and now they've parted the sea, so <laughs> to speak, to let the parade go through. We want to get you a little bit of the lay of the land as we watch these vehicles come through here. We are in between 6th and 7th on Mass Street at the beginning of this parade. The procession is going to head south about 13 blocks down to 19th Street, and we're expecting to see the players in uh, their individual vehicles being escorted down this parade route. And uh, Jackson, you were down at around, what, 9th, 9th Street a little bit earlier. Can you kind of give us a, a sense of what the feeling was down there? Just electric. I'm, this whole week, you know, fans have been excited to cheer on the team. Right when they got back, we had that rally. And, you know, they were welcomed with open arms and just a hero's welcome really felt like of uh, the incredible comeback we saw. And now, you know, it's the day of the parade that we've really been looking forward to, wanting to know when this day was going to come after winning the championship. We're seeing some dignitaries here. Congresswoman Sharice Davids representing the 3rd uh, District, which obviously includes Lawrence, Kansas, Mayor Shipley, Lawrence Mayor. So uh, these, these people have a lot to celebrate. Yes, what absolutely. a good time to be a mayor of, of a town, and especially a town like this, that's, that's so filled with joy and fun right and, now. And some very nice cars that <laughs> they're in. You know, we, <laughs> I heard, uh, as they say, word on the street is that the players, Coach Self, and the whole team are going to be on Corvettes, but we saw a picture. It looked like a Ford Bronco. Yeah. They uh, got a pretty sweet ride. They're going to have an awesome ride. Yeah. We know that for sure. Board of Regents coming down the street here. Everybody is so excited to see the players. And we know that the players and Bill Self got here maybe about a half an hour ago. They talked with some media. They are ready for this. This is what they've been waiting for since they won this championship game Monday night in New Orleans. And it's just been day after day after day of celebration for those guys. You, ha you have to do it. This was an incredible, incredible team. Um, the comeback the way they did, all th fight throughout the tournament. Um, and even though they were number one at points, they were kind of the underdogs at some points. We understand the players are just starting to get uh, moving. Their vehicles now coming down the uh, street here. We've got folks from KansasAthletics.com, Douglas County Commissioners. Hey, everybody's getting in on this parade, aren't they? <laughs> Amazing to see uh, the young people, the young kids who are getting to remember this you know, for the rest of their lives of seeing their favorite team come down Mass. Well, and that really is something, Jackson. There's a whole generation of Jayhawks fans who will remember this day, will remember this championship, will remember the players on this team. You know, the University of Kansas has now had four NCAA championships in basketball, and for the winningest basketball team 
in college basketball, that is really saying something. But it's been 14 years since yeah. we've won a championship. Yeah. And it's been too long. Too long since we've the, seen, a, seen a parade just like this. The debate might be over of the best college basketball town and best college basketball team. Travis Goth, athletics director there. In college basketball. Basketball support staff. Look at that. Isn't that wow. interesting? Old timey fire truck. They're bringing out a little bit of everything. <laughs> Looks like a tour, like a tour bus. They're getting a tour of Lawrence. <laughs> a party bus, right? We got a pretty oh, here we, sweet location here. We do, and you know, here come the Broncos. We were talking about. We were right. Oh. <laughs> Jackson's really excited about the Broncos. It's just cool. I don't know. They. Uh, <laughs> It is pretty great. Everybody's in a good mood today. And people started lining up here along the parade route hours mm -hmm. in advance. We, you know, walking down Mass, we've had people, of course, from Lawrence, from Kansas City Metro, from Kansas, from Missouri. Uh, I met some folks from Houston, Texas. Um, Houston, Texas, that were came here for the parade. I mean, that is something incredible. KU fans just from all over having to be here for this day. Team managers here in the uh, in the blue and the red Broncos. Special day for them as well. The hard work they, you know, help the team out to get to where they need to be. We got Cam Martin and Zach Clements, I believe, here in this yellow vehicle. And look at that one. Some young out. fans. Jay Jayhawk vehicle there. That is the Jayhawk Radio Network. It says. And, and listen, uh, this, is, this is something, there's been so much anticipation for this year. I think a lot of people feel like this victory, getting to the Final Four, that win over Villanova, here come the, here come the coaches. You've got Fred Portalbaum here in the uh, white convertible. <laughs> He's been with the team for some time. Definitely a special, special moment, special day for him and his family as well. We get pictures of Bill Self coming down in this parade. He's the man of the hour. The man he? himself. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever he told his players at halftime, you know, that we know or don't know, it worked. <laughs> it definitely worked. And it absolutely did. His 19th year here at the University of Kansas. And what a, there's been a lot of talk about this, a bittersweet year for him. Of course, he lost his father early, earlier this year, someone who was, um, he was very close with, a great mentor. And after this win in New Orleans, we saw him immediately go and give his mother his family a hug. We got more players coming down here. Joseph Yesifu, number one, and Kyle Cuff, and uh, Brady Morningstar in there that gray, gray convertible. And they've all got the net tied to their hats. Every player had a little bit of net they <laughs> There we Assistant go. Assistant coach Jeremy Case right there in the Bronco giving us a wave. KJ Adams, Bobby Pettiford, players. Uh, he looks just, like he's holding the. Looks got, like the Big 12 trophy yeah, there. They got. There's gonna. They're gonna have to build more cases over oh there in gosh. the athletics department. So many trophies. Curtis Townsend, has been with this program for so long, and uh, actually his daughter is a Kansas cheerleader as well. Was able to uh, cheer on. <laughs> there they are giving us a wave. Was able to cheer on her father from the sidelines in New Orleans. Um, what a wonderful thing for their family. And I had the opportunity to speak to some of his relatives down there in New Orleans. Just the nicest folks. So happy for them. Norm Roberts, again, another coach that has been with Bill Self for so long. Mitch Lightfoot, Jalen Coleman lands, and the championship trophy. Although it says, it says that is that is Tehan right Chris there. That's Chris Tehan, yes. Yeah. They got that one mislabeled. We know that guy. They've been having fun all week, that is for sure. <laughs> Remy Martin in this white convertible. Jalen Wilson. <laughs> Remy Martin there is such a are. card. He has so much fun on the court and off. And look at him, he is soaking this up. Dewan Harris, Christian Brown. Of course, There's those two guys would be together in this gray convertible coming down the street. Those two have been together since seventh grade Amazing. playing. They are brothers. Amazing. David McCormick, who came through so big for us in that championship game. Ochai Abaji, he was the player of the NCAA championship. Most outstanding of the tournament. Bill South, look at that car. That's pretty cool. Wow, that is awesome. The emotions I can only imagine are just coming through for 
for Coach Self right now, just seeing all the fans supporting him throughout these years and truly, getting this amazing Truly parade. cementing his legacy here at the University of Kansas. He There's was Wayne Simeon there. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of Chris Sheehan, oh, here comes Brian Haney and some of the commentators. Greg Gurley up there, who as a player himself in the 90s, went to the Final Fours and was part of some of Roy Williams' great teams. We, uh, you know, speaking of a, a Chris Tehan, what a family from Leewood, Kansas. His older brother, Connor Tehan, was part of the 2008 championship team. Yes. He went on to that 2012 Final Four team. And then his brother comes on to the university, goes to the Final Four in 2018, and then is part of this championship team here in 2022. They had a basketball in their crib early on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're doing over the Tehan household, but it's working. And I think we have finally reached what is about the end of this parade route here at 6th and Mass. You know, Chris, we're talking about how this is such a winning basketball program. Listen, the rules of basketball live here in Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, as KU fans love to say, this is the birthplace of UNC basketball. <laughs> this is a legendary place for Kansas basketball, Chris. But days like today are still very rare and too far between. So this is a very memorable day in Lawrence, don't you think? Well, absolutely. And the T-shirts are already out about being the home of North Carolina basketball and, and it has you know I, I don't know about you guys you are obviously both of you distinguished graduates of the University of Kansas so a day like this means uh, a lot more than it would to say a graduate from Mizzou or K-State certainly but uh, it's been fun yeah. to watch how these players have interacted with fans on and off campus this past week and you Haley you mentioned Chris Tehan who of course from Leewood and Rockhurst High School you know Chris Tehan for those who missed it took part in the football team's spring game yesterday. He was in he was in full pads and actually threw a touchdown pass that went 49 yards in the air. In the air. A cannon. Yeah, a can absolute oh. cannon, Jackson. Yeah. So as I say, it was just it's just one more illustration of the kind of fun that people have been having this past week. And yeah. Two players were at Raising Canes the other day selling chicken to folks. Yeah. They're soaking up every moment, every opportunity that comes along with a championship win, right? You cannot blame them for that. They're having so much fun. You see that in the way they perform on the court. You see that off the court, days like today, the way they interact with the fans. And, of course, they're also recognized for their sportsmanlike conduct on the court. Just a memorable team. So many memorable teams in the history of this program. And, Chris, this is certainly going to be one of them. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And, and, you know, just one more one more small illustration of the kind of the ways that players have been interacting with fans this past week. Um, Haley and Jackson, as you know, my wife is in Lawrence this weekend. It is her oldest daughter's sorority mother's weekend. So it, it's a big time to begin with. You throw in a national championship parade and it's even better. And my wife ended up tweeting last night selfies with Ochai Abaji and Christian Brown <laughs> at a uh, at a at a well-known watering hole in Lawrence that shall go unnamed, but uh, but they've been doing this well, all week long, and and I don't know who's been having more fun, the fans or the players, this past week. It's hard to say. Well, w great timing for Mother's Day weekend. And, <laughs> a and party on a party. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. glad that they're going to have wonderful memories of this to share together for quite a long time and <laughs> photos to remember. No, this is this is so much fun. And Lawrence is such a great place to be always if you're a KU fan, but especially during a championship run like this. And this sort of caps off this moment, this week, uh, this incredible time here for the university. And, you know, as we were in New Orleans, uh, I was at one of the pep rallies down there at a place called House of Blues, and I was one of the official pep rally locations. Uh, I caught up with the chancellor, and he said, you know, this is great for the entire university. Obviously great for the athletics department in terms of the way Bill Self is going to continue recruiting yeah. outstanding classes. And you and I were talking about some of the players coming in next year. But also it's just great for the visibility of the university nationally. <laughs> People getting to find out about KU yeah. who maybe don't already know about what a magical place we think this is. And Chris, we were saying earlier as well, you know, the debate is always what's the best college basketball town? What's the best, <laughs> you know, college basketball team? And 
the debate getting close to be over now. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The most winningest program in D1 history. Uh, we're biased, though. You yeah, know, we're just, biased. just <laughs> today. Absolutely. No. Just, and just to add to what Haley has been talking about, um, it's been well known down through the years, and it's not just the University of Kansas, but any school, any Division I school that has won a national title, especially when it comes to basketball or football, that sort of leads to an increase in funding. Uh, for, and not just for the athletic program, but for the entire school. So there is, uh, there is quite a positive benefit that comes after an accomplishment like this. And no, it's great. It's going to have a ripple effect. The last time KU won national championship 2008, KU football won a bowl game. All we can say there. Well, let, let's hope for that. <laughs> Fingers crossed a new era for Kansas football coming yes. this fall. But also a wonderful era for just Kansas City region sports fans. Yes, we were talking about Chiefs, Royals, a lot of winning happening lately. And all these little kids down here think that that's just the way we do things here in the Kansas City area. It's an exciting time to be a Kansas City area sports fan. I mean, the Royals starting off looking great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sporting's always been a great team. Of course, we have KU here right now, but yeah. uh, just an amazing time to watch the success we've had the last couple of years. And as we're looking down at the crowds, the crowds have dispersed pretty quickly, yeah. but it looks like maybe at least half of them are heading over across the street to the Free State Brewing Company. <laughs> looking down here past uh, Liberty Hall, and other iconic uh, places here along Mass Street, and there is still a, a big crowd down there. So I think it's a Sunday afternoon. Tomorrow's a school day, but I think the party's going to continue down here in Lawrence, Chris, at least for a little bit longer. Do, do either of you have a sense, what, in terms of numbers, how big of a crowd has turned out to welcome the KU Jayhawks? Obviously, it was 70,000 plus on Monday night. You think back to the championship parade in 08, that was another 70,000 or so crowd. Um, I know you're um, you're at the beginning of the parade route, so uh, but have you heard any numbers or uh, do you have a feel for just how big of a crowd, how big of a turnout today? You've walked most of the, a it's, lot of the roads. It's very, Chris, it's very close to what we saw on Monday. Uh, could be over that. Um, where we were, I think it's a little less people, so it's essentially people coming into Lawrence might be a little harder to get to, uh, but when you come in, it's packed down there. I mean, it's shoulder to shoulder. It's like you're at, you know, one of those watering holes you just mentioned. You're trying to, you know, get your way through. But, um, you know, everywhere you look, just just fans. And it's and it's not just uh, folks, you know, down there on the street. You've got rooftops and balconies yeah. all along Mass Street where we're situated right here. We actually have a third story balcony and there's a whole crew of little kids up there who were having just so much fun. And, uh, and you know, all along Mass Street, anybody who's been down here knows there's rooftops and balconies and, and windows and all of that is packed. So it's not just folks down at the ground level behind the barriers, but it's uh, it's up and down as well. So, I mean, the parade's continuing for some 13 blocks. That's a lot of room for people to spread out. Everybody gets an opportunity to get eyes on that national championship trophy and, uh, and, and relish this moment. And, uh, you know, I, I do think I have to wonder, what does Bill Self tell his guys about how they should soak this up enjoy this and absolutely. and you have to imagine that that conversation has happened just oh, absolutely and you know you can they almost looked a little almost well, not shocked but <laughs> just in awe of the support uh, i mean they've been seeing it all year and especially after the win but um you know i i was watching remy martin because he was standing up and he kind of <laughs> he's always dancing and yep. having fun but he looked like just staring at people like wow this is something i'm going to remember yeah. Uh, for some time. Well, and and they see that they see they see the fan support out at Allen Fieldhouse. Obviously, in that sort of intimate venue, they saw huge fan support at the seventy-five thousand seat Superdome yes. in New Orleans. But uh, to see it like this on a beautiful, warm Sunday afternoon along Mass Street, to see people, you know, fifteen, twenty deep in the sidewalk, little kids just dying to get a glimpse of their favorite player what that has to be like for them and they've seen yeah. that pretty consistently all week but this might be the biggest demonstration of that for the team they see it at Forbes Field when they land a smaller yep. version of that they saw it at the rally but but this this is so up close and personal to those guys some of whom are going to go off and have maybe an NBA career and and you were telling me about the, the guys who are coming in too 
we have a very good team. I say we as if I'm playing the game or we something. We are. We are. We are <laughs> definitely part of the team. <laughs> really, good, really good team coming in next year. I, I wouldn't want to be uh, playing KU basketball against KU basketball next year. You would not want to be one of our opponents. It's going to it's going to be a great team in, in a in a string of many great teams. Of course, there's a lot of talk about that 2020 team that everyone thinks that was the year we yeah. should have won it that yeah. year. And maybe this is this is um, making up for that in some Absolutely. way, uh, making and up for that lost championship, Chris. Well, it, it, next year's team is going to be strong. There's no doubt about it. In fact, Caesar Sportsbook in Vegas already has the Jayhawks, as you both well know, 10 to 1 favorites to win it all again next year with teams like Gonzaga and Duke and uh, UNC not, not far behind. And looking ahead to the NBA draft, obviously Ochai Abaji from Oak Park High School in the North Kansas City, City School District has improved his uh, chances of becoming a lottery pick in, in the NBA draft, which is coming up soon. And there are certainly questions about uh, guys like David McCormick who have a chance to come back right. for one more year. And I know there is some speculation mm -hmm. that David may kind of take a look at the, at the landscape and say, well, maybe one more year at KU might enhance his chances for a, a, an NBA career and, and maybe a bigger payday later on. Right, and, and this is also have to think about the last time we will see a lot of these players, folks like Ochai going on hopefully to the NBA, making a ton of money because he deserves it, but also uh, going to say goodbye to other players like Mitch Light, but super senior. <laughs> as they call him. And he is super in so many ways. His personality is so much fun. And uh, he loves to even poke fun at himself. Just, you get to know the guys on a team like this. And, and there's so many stars, so many local guys too, which is great. Local guys that you know people have known throughout the years, as you just mentioned, Chris. But um, you know we've got to know. Uh, mm -hmm. We mentioned that earlier, how they've just been so supportive how they've feed it off that support that we've yeah. had, uh, mm -hmm. that they've had the last couple of uh, months, really. But uh, it's been amazing to see as well. You know, I also mentioning KU Athletics, I think we should also uh, mention the women's team who also went very far in the tournament mm -hmm. this year, uh, which was just awesome to see, um, you know, as KU, KU alums must, uh, must give them credit as well. Yeah, that's absolutely wonderful. No, I mean, you, uh, you think about uh, who's coming back on this team, and although we, we're saying goodbye to a national championship team here at the end of this season. We have a lot to look forward to for next year. Who knows? Maybe we should book this balcony for next year. I'm getting ahead of myself, obviously. Find the guy, book it, book it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, for us, I think, as KU fans, it, it is. it has been really fun to be on this ride to – to, to go to you know to Chicago for the Elite Eight, to go to New Orleans, um, where I was with Len Jennings for the championship and Final Four run, and uh, and and those thrilling games against Villanova, getting to the championship game. Everyone wondering, are we going to play Duke? Are we going to play UNC? <laughs> yes. I think there were a lot of very unhappy Duke fans. We. We are also hearing that Remy Martin is uh, is down here giving autographs. Of course, hopefully they are, and hopefully whoever's getting those autographs is gonna put that away Keep in a very that safe ever. Place. <laughs> Keep it forever. Well, as we're looking, that, that does not happen every day. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're look we're looking at that moment where Remy Martin jumped out of the car and jumped over to the crowd and had a moment to sign a few autographs, and then it, it, as soon as he signed, it looked like maybe four or five quick autographs. He jumped back into the car because he doesn't want to be left behind and, and was greeted with a, a huge round of applause by that, that section of fans there along Mass Street. The, the ride is leaving, Remy. Get on. <laughs> as he should. As he should. Yeah. Well, you know, we, you and I were sharing memories of past Final Fours or championship games that we witnessed as students. We were the ones going down onto Mass Street, filling the street yep. and celebrating. And those are great memories for us personally. Uh, I think in 2002, uh, some friends, I was in high school, friends and I went down to Forbes Field where the team lands in Topeka and, uh, and got signatures from uh, one of Roy's teams. Uh, you're talking guys like Nick Collison and Drew Gooden and Kirk Heinrich on a Sports Illustrated, mm -hmm. something I still have to this wow. day. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, awesome. I mean, if you're a KU fan, that is a prized yeah. possession. It finds a very safe place in your home to live. And uh, and how great for those fans today to uh, get that special moment along this parade route uh, with Remy Martin. 
great great guys on this team who are who recognize I think what this means obviously to them but to mm -hmm. the fans too and keep keep that in their mind. I mean the fans support as we've been talking about has been just incredible and I mean you know supporting all these businesses as well. I mean every place you went into uh, here off Mass Street uh, it was packed with people. Uh, the local shops, the, the other well-known places. We're looking at Free State Brewery where, <laughs> you know, it looks pretty... The party is happening. The party is happening. But uh, <laughs> just incredible to see. I mean, uh, this is a memory that a lot of people will remember for some time of, you know, seeing this KU team take part in this championship parade. Everybody was asking when the parade was going to happen, when was going to happen. And we finally got the time Sunday on this beautiful, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful Sunday afternoon. It's a little windy, but uh, well, we had some papers just blow away, but that's no, about it. No complaints <laughs> about that at all. Now, as you look out here, you see parents uh, holding their infants and in carriers who are decked out in their crimson and blue, those future Jayhawks. You got teeny tiny little cheerleaders out there with their pom-poms. You got moms and dads and students and grandmas and grandpas and quite literally generations of yeah. Jayhawks who turn out for an event like this. Not everybody's able to get out. Oche Abaji continuing down along this parade route. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, not everybody's able to get out to the field house for a game. Not everybody is able to make that mm -hmm. trip down to New Orleans to go see a championship game. But this is an event where, uh, you know, folks can come out with their family on a, on a beautiful afternoon, as you were saying, and, uh, and soak up this moment. Yep. Uh, down here at 6th and Mass, it's pretty well cleared out. But we know the parade's continuing. Bill Self down farther along the uh, south of us, down the uh, parade route. As the, we are now at 19th Street as this is uh, just beginning to wrap up. That is the uh, sort of end point of this yes. parade. Uh, and Mass Street is so long. There is so much to see along Mass Street that uh, that it just keeps going and going. And, uh, and I assume after this, they're going to kind of get together and, yeah. and, and remember wasn't this awesome? Yeah, a you know, great day. It's hey. incredible too because when we, we first arrived, we saw um, people lined up at noon, just two hours before uh, this out. parade was going to start. Chris, yeah. Haley and Jackson, a, uh, a as we wrap up our coverage here on KCWE uh, 29. Um, so you're both KU grads. So at what point does the campus return to normal? <laughs> and I don't, I'm not sure what normal looks like after your men's basketball mm -hmm. team wins a national championship. I don't know that this week has been anything but normal. But uh, yeah, when do things settle down and, and resume a more uh, normal routine? Maybe Summer. around finals? I was going to say. Summer. <laughs> <laughs> when the school year is over and people finally, you know, take in what just happened of uh, this incredible year. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think this is just the party continues for quite a while, however long, who knows. But uh, but I think the school pride is going to last yes. for for so long, and and that is something that's going to resonate with students quite a bit you as bet. we are now wrapping up our parade coverage here along Mastery. What a great afternoon for us, for the KU fans, hopefully for all of you at home who have been watching. And, uh, and it's just been our honor to be able to bring this parade to you, a moment of joy and happiness in Jayhawk country, rock chuck Jayhawk. That is going to wrap up our coverage here from Lawrence, Kansas.